What's up guys? So we got a little bit news update from Plarium CMs. This is gonna be a very short video. We got two new buffs and now they basically fully confirmed how the auras in Siege work and what are their intention and they possibly gave me some hints but it's up to you how you want to inter, uh, interpret them. I know I butchered that word but it's a very hard one. So there has been a big drama lately around the um, speed auras or like the auras in the um, siege. Do, do, do the arena auras work or not? And originally Plarium said that they don't work <laughs> and people were telling, content, content creators were telling people that they don't work. Then it was found out that they actually do work and Plarium got it wrong. And there was a lot of, you know, I saw some Reddit threads, I got some messages from people, I saw the discussions on public discords. There was a lot of people that were speculating, <laughs> to me personally too, even though I didn't even make a video about it, that content creators are intentionally <laughs> lying to players in order to keep to get advantage. And they were themselves using the arena speed auras in the last siege and were telling other people that they don't work. But so it turned out that it was a Plarium's mistake. They didn't intend for it to work and they thought that it didn't, but it did. And now they have confirmed that they are gonna fix it. I don't know, <laughs> you can't see my hands fully, I want to do that properly. Ah, uh, okay, never mind. They're gonna fix it. That's, you know, I was telling them in the discussion with the content community managers. And obviously, you know, they don't make these discussions, um, decisions. They only discuss it with us, but the intent is not for these auras to work. I was asking why not just let them work, but nope, they don't want them to work. It's not that big deal to me personally, I don't care, but I think many people I have already seen in comments that they are expressing their annoyance and they feel like Parium is just screwing with the players. But then I kind of, you know, got a small hint possibly from the CMs and Again, this is not confirmed. This is me trying to, you know, <laughs> extract information about them and uh, um, trying to be clever and maybe I'm not, but I asked Parium CM if, um, if this means that, the, I don't recall exactly the wording that they said, but due to their wording where, where, where she said that the auras are not gonna work in sieges, it kind of uh, almost sounded like they intend for new auras to come for sieges and uh, I asked about it and she didn't okay I'm I'm not allowed to show pictures this is a funny thing by the way some inside information about the rules I have had to consult them before about this I can't show pictures about the discussions in the content creator chat but I can read it and say what has been discussed there it's a weird rule you know but I'm a Finnish person and we follow the rules but I'm right now, you know, kind of sneak peeking exactly what she said. And I'm not quoting it, but I think I can literally just read what she said. But um, she, okay, she basically said that it's too early to speculate if we are going to get the seeds auras, but never say never. And she put like, you know, extra, extra use to the bot. There's like 10 use or whatever. So you can um, interpret that however you will. I think it's... Uh, Sounds like it's either already a done thing that we will get seeds out of us, or maybe it's something that they're maybe um, considering that they have talked about. But the way that I interpret her wording, it kind of sounds like it's something that they at least thought about if they didn't uh, already do. And if I were to speculate it, I have no information, but it would kind of make sense if they add seeds out us in the future. And they probably could be a lot stronger than average Auras to, you know, uh, justify the point of, of adding any new Auras to the game. They could make, uh, you know, I don't know, speed Aura that is uh, 40 instead of 30 or 25 or 18. They could be slightly better than the Auras, uh, the universal Auras or ones for a specific content. That's my guess, but I don't know. So. That's that's that topic put to rest. We will see what happens with that. I don't think, you know, the meta is speed meta, let's be honest about it. So the speed definitely matters. 
speed hours are a big deal. Of course, you know, the conditions in specific rooms, what you can come up with, like maybe you have a lizardman only room and you have a speed aura and like Lazarus or something like that. You have a lockout or hard CC and speed aura and they don't. It obviously does make a difference, so I wouldn't actually say that this is a small thing. I think I think for sieges specifically, where it doesn't matter if you have a low, slow battle and you lose, it only matters if you can win in defense. Speed is big deal, so I think it's relevant. It might be a selling point for some champions if they introduce strong speed auras, specifically speed auras. I don't think siege only HP aura that was like very strong, like 40% HP. I don't think that would be a big deal, but speed auras I think would be. So we'll find find out about that, you know. Let's say there's an attack champion with siege aura, and then you can always use it in any attack room. That might be relevant depending how good the champion is. Now, back to the other news that we got. So there's basically two new champions, not new champions, but two old champions that are buffed. And um, they are not the biggest buffs, but let's let's get into it. So the first champion that is buffed, by the way, I don't have either one of these, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. <laughs> Maybe I have Nobel and I just forgot about... Wait, wait, isn't Nobel... I don't even know what faction Nobel is, come on. I thought it was Demon Spawn, but I guess it's undead. Dude, did I just not see it? Where is Nobel? No, no, it's Shadow King. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. Okay, scratch that, scratch that. I'm just being a dumb, dumb... There, there it is, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a demon, but it's Shadow King. That's, that's what confused me. So, obviously, I don't have a Nobel. He looks very good. Good. He, he looks very cool, but I don't think he has ever been any popular in any content. So, Nobel and Lady Iret were buffed. Let's actually look at the Iret first, since it's in the bus. Iret is kind of... They're both, you know, on the same tier. Basically, not big deal, never use champions. Lady Iret has, like, some heals and uh, cleanse on her kit. <laughs> That's about it, you know, servability, but there's many champions that do it. And usually on these kind of kits, if you only provide servability and no other kind of utility at all, because, you know, there's many revivers that do heal, turn meter boost and revive, it is kind of hard to compete with those, unless it does like X or like some kind of utility that is either good in Hydra or PvP, but I don't think she really does anything like that. But let's see what they um, they buffed her. Let's first see what they're saying about it. With the following changes, our main goal was to enhance, enhance her supporting role. After this rebalance, you'll find Lady Irret's kit more impactful with significantly improved healing capabilities. Like I just said, she would need something else than just healing because there's plenty of champions that can heal you and shield you and they also add, add some really strong utility. Her A2 healing now scales of her own HP and this heal can still be critical. Additionally, if the target is fully healed, she will not only increase her turn meter but also heals all allies by 50% of the surplus heal, allowing you to keep the entire team at full HP more consistently. To help allies cycle their skills more frequently, their A3 will now reduce the cooldown of ally skills by one turn, except for Lady Irat herself. And then we actually have the, you know, the kit, but that pretty much sums it up. The, um, that's actually pretty good, you know, reducing the cooldowns of your teammates is kind of good utility for Hydra. I mean, it is for PvP too, but she ob obviously doesn't have anything that would be worthy, worthy of PvP. The, the only place I really see that you might use her is in Hydra, where you need a lot of heals. But like I just mentioned, the issue with her kit is that um, if you use her as a healer, that means that you also need another champion <laughs> that does the revive, unless you have you know some kind of crazy risk team where nobody can ever die. And then you probably don't need Lady Irat in the first place. But um, 
yeah, there's revivers that do heals and other utility or buffs and also revive. So I don't know about that. Let me know in the comments, but I certainly certainly would like um, trade 100,000 Lady Irrets to get one, one Harima and I wouldn't even blink about uh, thinking that. Okay, then let's see what they did to Nobel. We are enhancing Nobel's kit to expand his role beyond just a damage dealer. <laughs> oh, he was a damage dealer. Making him, he's kind of, you know, damage dealer, but he has a weird utility, so he doesn't really make the cut as a damage dealer. Making him more versatile as control type champion, the changes will grant him greater control over his enemy, enemies with signature fear debuff, the ability to buff himself, turn meter manipulations, and tricky passive that can unexpectedly disrupt the enemy composition. I'm telling you right off the bat, the only way to make fear relevant, and you know, it can only be relevant in PvP, because it obviously doesn't affect the bosses, the only way to make it relevant is that it either goes through immunity and stone skin, or that you can't polymorph from the uh, fear, and ideally both of them. If you had a champion with fear that goes through immunity and you cannot get polymorphed, then we're talking, Th then it might actually be an interesting champion for PvP. Otherwise not, you know, if you just have mediocre damage and you, you trade high damage for some fears, it doesn't just, um, not only does it not benefit you, but it actively makes your nuker generally worse because it's a big liability that your nukers can get polymorphed. That's why, you know, one of the best win conditions against something like Harima is just to have her polymorph because she can often taunt the enemy team and almost you wouldn't even want her to do it. She would be... Harima would... Somebody's gonna disagree with me with this on big time and feel free to fight fight with me on this on comments but I will stand my ground. Harima would literally be much better champion if she didn't do the taunt because she wouldn't get polymorphed in PvP. D debate me, G go ahead, but you know, <laughs> you're not gonna change my mind on that one, I, I don't think. His A1 will now decrease the duration of all enemy buffs with 100% chance if the target enemy is under either fear or true fear debuff. That's actually kind of interesting, that does sound little bit good utility. The issue again is that you need to land the fear and landing the fear is not practical and you wouldn't even really want to land it anyway as an ogre. Nobel's A2 will not only smack harder but also grant him increased attack if the target is under fear or true fear debuff. A3 will now steal 50% of the target's turn meter unconditionally. Additionally, if he manages to kill the target, the cooldown of his A2 will, reduce, will be reduced by one turn. Kind of good, but not that big deal, you know. There's champions that block revive on kill and so on, so this is not really um, that big deal. We t tweaked his passive skill, or the, the new champion, what's it called? Nice? <laughs> it's not nice the way that you think, think about it, but yeah, nice. <laughs> Nice, not with C. Nice literally, um, why is it not loading? Okay, nice literally revives a random ally on kill. That's, that's a good utility. And he's a HP scaling nuker, so that's pretty powerful. Anyway, back to Nobel. <laughs> the fake demon spawn. We tweaked his passive skill to become much more dangerous when Nobel is paired with another turn meter control champion, now he will place fear debuff on enemy with 20% chance if their turn meter is reduced by any active turn meter reduction. When paired with Lady Kimi, Chujen or other champions with AoE turn meter reduction effects, you can set up some pretty nasty opportunities for... <laughs> oh my god, you're just kidding me. For nukers like Fortus or simply keep the enemies constantly under fear debuff. Okay. I mean, you know what I'm gonna say about that, you know, Fortus also was buffed some time ago, Absolute Trash, I guess he has fears and that's that's why they're um, talking about it. 
but you know, Fortus is trash, Nobel is trash, you're not gonna make nukers that do debuffs, a lot of debuffs, good in PvP, unless it's some very specific stuff. The less debuffs, the better, honestly. I mean, another example is Taras. Basically the same thing that I just said about Harima, that um, his A1 can put attack down and the passive can put fear and most people probably would especially at this point when we have 4p stone skin uh, from accessories and it's you can get 4p stone skin and 4p lethal on the same build on nukers uh, it's a liability that his passive fears the enemy team at the start of the battle it sounds good it would be super OP if uh, Wait, where? Oh, yeah, there it is. He has like 200 million different passes. If Stone Skin didn't exist and it wasn't so easy to pull it off on Nukers, it would still be good to fear them at the start of the battle. But at this point, the chances are that the enemy are in Stone Skin anyway. And if they are not, and maybe somebody in their team isn't, you're just gonna get polymorphed. So Taras would literally be better without the fear on the passive and especially without the attack down on the A1. This is a random way to win against Taras teams. Otherwise, he's, he has the greatest damage, he's unkillable, OP guard. <laughs> the only way really to, you know, strike fear against uh, Taras heart is to have a team full of polymorph, which, you know, at high level classic arena or live arena or any kind of PvP we will ever get in raid. Almost every single champion will be in Polymorph, so you really don't want to have this on Nukers. But yeah, that's about it for the buffs. I don't know what you guys think about that. I think the most interesting part is what we found out about the Seeds Auras and the speculations about it. Feel free to um, let me know in comments if you, if you think that I'm taking too much um, freedom to interpret their thoughts and maybe it's not something that they would actually do but i'm kind of leaning that they that's what they're planning to do and she just <laughs> she wasn't allowed to say it so she kind of said it uh, not directly anyway that's it for this video have a nice day and see ya